Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to get a non-iPhone or iPad image into Apple Photos so you could edit it. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to a playlist. In that playlist, I'll have all the videos I do on Apple Photos, so you could easily find them and watch them. Now, whenever you want to process a non-iPhone or iPad image in Apple Photos, the first thing you need to do is get that image into Apple Photos. There's two different ways you could do that. The first way is open up Apple Photos and go up to File, and down to import then navigate to where the images are on your computer i happen to have a single raw file on my desktop if i had more than one i just select them all and click on import i'm not going to do it here because i'm going to show you the second method in a moment but when you do it that way they'll show up in the section of apple photos called imports the second way to get images into apple photos is my preferred way because you'll simply drag them and drop them directly into the album you want them in. Now let's talk about that for a moment though. There's albums and there's folders. If we look over on the left hand side of Apple Photos, you'll see that there's a section called albums. Below that are all the albums, but the albums are actually inside of folders. So a folder contains albums and the albums contain the images. Folders don't hold the images directly. So folders contain albums, albums contain images. Some of the folders and some of the albums are part of Apple Photos. They were there from day one, you didn't create them. Those folders, at least, you won't be able to delete. So I have media types, shared albums, my albums. I can't rename those, I can't delete those. Inside of those are albums. You can see in my in the folder that is called my albums, within that folder are several albums. Some of these albums, like this one I created myself, I could actually rename this if I wanted to. See, I just click on it, rename it, or I could right click on it and delete it, or I could duplicate it. So you could create your own albums and you could rename them, you could delete them when you want, you could create your own folders and you could rename those and you could delete those as well. So what you want to do when you have an image, I have this raw file. Now, of course, it doesn't need to be a raw file. It could be a JPEG or a TIFF or whatever. But when you want to drag it into a specific album that is inside of a specific folder, you could create that. First of all, just go up here and like just see these plus signs when you hover over there. Just go over something, click on it, create a folder. So I'm going to create a folder. And then after I create that folder, I'll... Uh, click on that folder and then go to the little plus sign next to it and create the album. So the album is inside of it and then I could actually drag it wherever I want. If I didn't want this here, I could drag it where I want it. And then once I have it all set up, now I want this image in my working album. So I'll click on that. All you need to do is go to your images and drag them into it. So now it is inside of Apple Photos, as easy as that. And when you're ready to edit it, just maximize out Apple Photos double click on the image then go up to the top and click on edit and let's edit this this is an unprocessed raw file and you know I don't think it needs a ton of processing but what I like to do first when I bring an image into any editing program I look at what does it need most what is sticking out to me and to me the shadows are really dark so the first thing I'm gonna do is jump right to light click open options and I'm gonna open up the shadows so I'll move this slider to the right Move it a lot, quite a bit. And uh, then highlights, I don't know, highlights look pretty good. Maybe I'll just tweak those up just a tiny bit. Uh, brightness, uh, maybe tone brightness down just a little bit, add some contrast. Black point, I want some absolute blacks in these really dark areas, so I'll move that to the right just a little bit. Let's see how it's making the, those darkest areas just a little bit darker. And that is pretty good. And uh, I'll go to color next. 
and I'll roll that options open and I'm just going to bring vibrance up just a little bit. You can see this is a pretty colorful image. Um, actually it's, it's pretty much done. It doesn't need a lot, but what I do want to demo and what it does need is if you look right here and right here, there's a couple birds and it was a slow enough shutter speed where those birds are all blurry. So I want to use the retouch brush to get rid of those. So we're going to open up the retouch brush. And what I do recommend is when you use the retouch brush is do it late in your workflow. Because if you start off with a raw file that needs a lot of editing, a lot of tone editing and a lot of color editing, if you did retouch right at the beginning and then you start editing the tone, you know, adding a lot of contrast, changing the shadows and the highlights and the black point, and then you're adding a lot of color, what you may find is wherever you like removed a bird, you'll get a little like circle there and a little circle at the other bird because it's, um, you know, not, uh, recognizing that there used to be a bird there. And what you should do is do all your editing, get it all out of the way, then come in with the retouch brush at the end so that when you do use it and it samples the surrounding pixels, it's sampling, um, pixels that are of similar uh, color, tone, and texture. So to use it, open it up, click on the little brush, and it's simply a little round brush. You could adjust the size of it with this slider right here. You could then adjust the size also if you prefer with the bracket keys. The right bracket key makes it larger, left bracket key smaller. Then when you have it so that it is just large enough to cover whatever you want to cover, or if even if it's a little smaller, you don't have to just like click and create the circle. You could draw with it. So I'll just paint over this bird right there. Let it do its thing. It takes a second or two. See, it got rid of the bird. Then I'll get a smaller brush here. Use the left bracket key and click on that to get rid of that bird as well. So that is the retouch brush. And... Finally, maybe we'll, uh, it has no noise. This was shot at ISO 64 with the Nikon Z7 II, if I remember correctly. And it um, doesn't need any noise reduction. So we will go to sharpen, and I will sharpen it. You could zoom in by hitting Command Plus on your Mac a couple times. Kind of look at an area that you want sharp. You can see there's really no noise in it. And that looks pretty good. Hit Command Minus a couple times. So you zoom back out and that looks pretty good. Uh, I don't think it needs a vignette. What I could do is I could crop it. You could see we have part of a dock popping in over here. So I kind of want to get rid of that. So I'm going to click over here to crop, right? And I'm just going to pull this corner in like that to get that dock out of there. And then when you're done with the crop tool, you could click done over in the top, right? Or you click on filters or you click on adjust. And then when you click on adjust, it just takes a second. There you go. And there we are. Now, um, now when you're done, let's just say you want to share this with the world. I didn't demo how to export an image uh, from here. First of all, click done. Uh, what you can do is if you're going to send this in an email, um, you know, send it out an email, or if you're going to send it in a message, you could click this little um, icon right here and you could put it in a shared album, uh, send it through mail, messages, notes, whatever you could do there. If you just want to like export a JPEG to your desktop so that you could then do what you want with it from there, to do that, go up to File and down to Export and then Export One Photo and you'll get this dialog box. Now what you should do is click this little arrow right here so you open it up larger. That gives you more options. We're going to export it as a JPEG. JPEG quality maximum, let's say. It'll be a larger file. Uh, color profile, you could pick your color profile. Most often, if you're going to share it with other people that aren't necessarily using a, a Mac, or they might be using a PC, whatever, you may want to then use a color profile sRGB. It may look slightly different, though, than it looks on your Mac uh, because you're using a different color profile. Uh, full size or custom? Well, you could pick one of the preset sizes, small, medium, or large. Let's go with custom. And let's just say that I want the width because this is, you know, a landscape image. I want it to be a 1080. That's the size that you would use for, um, for Instagram. So I'm going to go with that. 
And do you want to include any titles, keywords, or captions you might have added? I didn't add any, so it doesn't matter if I uh, check that. If you don't want to dox your location, if for some reason this, this image doesn't have location info because Nikon Z7 II doesn't have GPS info, but if you didn't want to dox your info, like you're using an iPhone, make sure you don't check that box so that your location isn't included in the file. Um, how do you want to name it? I'm going to do sequential, and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this um, Outer Harbor. That's what it's called in Buffalo. Outer Harbor and subfolder. No, just nothing like that. So just like that, and we're going to click on Export, and it's going to ask me where. I'll do it right to the desktop, and it's exported. Now I could bring that down a little bit, and here it is right here. It's Outer Harbor-1 JPEG. We could look at it. And there it is. There is our exported image from Apple Photos, uh, just like that. So that is how you go about getting a non-iPhone or iPad image into Apple Photos, and then you could edit it just like any other image and um, go from there. Now, in subsequent videos, I'm going to show you how to use plugins with Apple Photos, such as Topaz Labs, Denoise AI. Maybe we'll use that in another video. Then after I do that video, that'll be the next video. Then after that, I'll show you how to do edits on an iPhone directly and then later on an iPad directly. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>